More than 80 years after the tragedy, the wreck of the Titanic lies over 12,000 feet deep in the northern Atlantic. With its submergence, a myth died and was born at the same time. The idea then was that the Titanic was unsinkable. It was making it that that was more um, wonderful or more infallible than nature or God. 10th of April, 1912. The Titanic stands ready for its maiden voyage out of Southampton Harbor. More than 1,000 passengers embark on the largest ship that had ever been built. They took their places strictly according to class, both millionaires and poor immigrants. For all of them, the destination was the same, New York. In the third class, one could take a ticket for 10 pounds heading for the promised land. Those who were able to pay those 10 pounds found their bunks on the Titanic's lowest levels. We were going third class because, for one reason, my father had spent most of his money on buying this house in um, Kansas, and also because he wanted to open a tobacconist um, shop. The commander of the Titanic, Captain Smith, was an experienced seaman with a solid reputation. Exactly at noon, the Titanic, the colossus they believed was unsinkable, left the harbor. For Smith, this was the crowning moment of a long career. He intended this to be the voyage with which he sailed into a well-deserved retirement. Even in the third class, life on deck was a taste of unaccustomed luxury, the world of first-class passengers. It was just the luxury that any first-class passenger expected. It was there. And they would not go around screaming how fantastic everything is. They just say, oh, it's nice here and it's, it's, it's beautiful. But this is just what they expect because this is what they meet if they go to the Ritz, Ritz in London, for example. This is what they expect. They are going to have first class. Greetings to the ones who stayed at home from the most luxurious ship of the world. The communication needs of the passengers completely engaged the radio men. It was a fatal waste of time. The more and more frequent ice hazard signals were ignored by the Morse operators. The engines of the ocean liner ran at full steam. 15th of April, 1912, shortly before midnight, about 1,500 feet in front of the ship, the lookout noticed the outlines of an iceberg. On the bridge, the first officer tried to maneuver the ship out of the way of a collision. The ship shook and lurched. A few curious passengers from first and second class went up on deck to have a look. Men played football with these pieces of ice that had fallen down on the forward well deck. And first-class passengers looked down on them from, from higher up to see what was going on because they thought it was fun. But to start with, it was, it was something that happened and, and they had to clear out the damage and then they would be going again. Deep in the flanks of the ship, a hole had opened. Water poured in and started inundating the boiler room. My father went up on deck to find out what had happened and came back down and said, apparently the ship has struck an iceberg. Will you get the children out of bed as quickly as possible and up on deck? People on deck are still calm. Many of the passengers had not even noticed the collision. But Captain Smith already knew the cruel reality. His ship was lost, and in the lifeboats, only half of the passengers would fit. There was some kind of breakdown in, in this man, with this man, that he couldn't actually cope with the situation because they lost so much time distress rocket. The crew hoped that the ship close to the Titanic could help. Only after midnight did the captain give commands to send emergency. Morse codes. Meanwhile, water pours, unstoppable, into the ship. A lot of people thought it was unsinkable and so didn't bother to move, just stay where they were. But my father must have had a different idea. But he got us immediately um, out of bed and on deck. So he was either, he had forethought, or a, premon had a premonition or something that the, something really was bad happening. The passengers were unwilling to get into the lifeboats. First the ladies, then the children, and at last men. 
Even here, the rules of a class-bound society were binding. Probably it was the first boss and second class went first, and my father didn't ever manage it. He, d he didn't manage to escape, to survive. Under the deck, panic broke out in the third class. Terrified passengers tried to reach the deck. Members of the ship's crew held them back. I think it's absolutely dreadful because you didn't have loads of money that you weren't as important as the, as the others were with money, the millionaires. But some millionaires stayed on board. For example, Isidor Strauss did not want to take the place from a woman or child. His wife, Ida, stayed with him and died. John Jacob Astor got a place for his pregnant wife in one of the boats, but he stayed. Benjamin Guggenheim wanted to die as a gentleman. He went back to his cabin with a bottle of champagne. There were so many women and children left on the Titanic because suddenly they were like ants coming up on the boat deck and they couldn't understand where they had all been. Suddenly the decks were packed with people and there were no lifeboats left. The women and the, and the children who were left I mean, they absolutely panicked because they could see there was no hope at all. They couldn't jump in the sea. Well, they jumped in the sea, they would have been drowned. I mean, there was no hope. So, it must have been absolutely terrible. They tried to get away from the water as much as possible. They climbed higher and higher and higher. But when Titanic broke in two, the, the, the stern section started shaking so violently that actually she, she shook off the people, most of them that were hanging up there. And then they fell down. To me it's just an awesome picture. And also again, to think of my, 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 then thinking again of my father being on it when I see it sinking. At 20 past two, the waves swallowed what was, until then, the biggest ship in the world. 1,495 people lost their lives, either by freezing or drowning. Dead bodies floated in the water around the lifeboats. One and a half hours later, another ship picked up the survivors. Full of hope, expecting news, even until death, the class system was decisive. Two-thirds of those in first class half of those in second class, and only just half of those who had bought a third class ticket survived the catastrophe. What we lost there with the Titanic was the belief that technology is safe. Today, if somebody says it cannot happen, it's very easy to answer Titanic. <laughs>